Hello, my name is Hamid. Uh, today I'm working on a Sterling uh, Marathon wine cooler. Uh, as you can see, this is a cute unit. They're using R600 uh, gas on this one uh, for cooling system. This unit was not cooling today. I plugged it in for four hours, run it. Uh, the compressor was getting hot, but nothing was happening inside. The inside of this wine cooler was not getting cold. So I'm going to use a piercing valve on this unit and check the pressure on it and see maybe I have a leak on this system or maybe the cap tube is plugged on it. I don't know what, what's wrong with this unit, so I'm going to show you how to do this. So you can see how it looks from an inside. It's really fancy and cute unit and I'm gonna get to the back of this unit there's my gauges the Pearson valve and it even says R600 the warning risk of fire flammable materials and then queso uh, on some of the units that they are use R600 if you have defrost issue or any kind of seal system problem you cannot use a torch on it or uh, it's it's technically butane gas so it's a little bit uh, risky the normal uh, compressors or uh, units to work on them and so i'm going to use this piercing valve you can see subcubulate piercing and the, I think the port number on this one is Bravo Papa Vector 31 and it kind of looks like this oh these are the <clears throat> bits and pieces <clears throat> usually there is a there's a line on the side of the compressor uh, you can use the piercing valve on this but right now there's no way i can use it here i'm gonna have to use it on the uh, suction line which is that one so i'm going to open this so this is opening So the first thing I did was I went to internet and I wrote down can you use piercing valve on R600A and there was no answer for it because this R600A unit is brand new on the market um, less guys are working on these units if they have seal system problem manufacturers are usually uh, writing them off they write them off instead of fixing them because there's less guys that they work on R600 so I'm going to use the person valve here uh, so I have to use one of these clips here I'm using the thicker one there's one a small one thicker one thinner and thicker so I'm going to use this thicker and bigger size here and then I'm gonna have to <coughs> using a site that after getting the reading on this i would be able to do the welding on it but i cannot do the welding on it unless i uh, take all the pressure off from this so i have to vacuum it then i would be able to weld it or use a torch on it otherwise it's really dangerous it can burn uh, burn you or it can uh, create all kind of problems so you don't want to use a mm, torch or any kind of lighter or a fire you cannot even use a hair dryer or a heat gun on these units you got defrost issue uh, you have to defrost it manually for 24 hours or use uh, hot water and or you can also use a steamer So you can see I'm going to tight it. I'm going to have to tight it really good.
these are small uh, wine coolers uh, when they get problem i've seen uh, most of the time the companies they just do they just write it off and they don't work on it because the labor is expensive on these for example this unit is around 1500 dollars canadian and if you get seal system problem the evaporator or the compressor and the cap tube shop supplies service labor everything is going to get closer to uh, seven or eight hundred dollars maybe higher and then uh, once the companies are giving the uh, the customers the estimate for these units the minimum would be at least five to six hundred dollars to fix these to do the seal system on them and most of the time the companies doesn't work on seal system on these or 600a so far i know uh, 2018 uh, really less companies and guys are working on our 600a because you need a special tools for these to get the tools the connectors the vacuum the butane the gas uh, the gauges you have to buy different different gauges uh, all the tools that you're going to use on our 600a would be a special order um, they call it locker ring so the locker rings are around three thousand dollars to buy buy them and i think whirlpool um, manufactures um, liber manufactures which is germany and i don't know who else they have um, locker ring uh, uh, tools and they are not cheap the cheap one would be around three thousand dollars so my gauge will read zero. So I'm gonna put this on here. I wanna make sure it's super tight. So I put my gauges on tight here. I'm gonna open it from here, nothing. I'll close it back in. Um, just to make sure I don't have any gas or anything left inside the pipe. I just opened it, my gauges are still reading zero pounds. And the last thing I'm going to do is, I will create a hole inside by uh, putting pressure on this piercing valve. There's like a pin. When I turn this, towards the right is gonna create a hole inside the pipe it's gonna pierce a hole and then once I release it okay so I already got the the hole inside and you can see my gauge it went from zero to so my okay actually i closed that so i create a hole i didn't open it i'm gonna open it now um, okay so here one i think three turns should be uh, enough for the for the proper reading two and three so You can see I'm getting 10 pounds reading. This indicates that I have leak on this unit. Um, I'm gonna have to see where the leak is. If the leak is on any of these hoses that you can see, if the leak is on the cap tube or on the filter, anywhere else, I would be able to repair it. I'm gonna have to vacuum all the gas all the Freon uh, or the R600A or B10 needs to be uh, vacuumed, uh, recovered. Uh, after that, I can repair these hoses. But if I have problem with the evaporator on this unit, that I'm going to show you how it looks from inside. If I have Freon leak on this unit, then I'm gonna have to order the evaporator i don't know i've never ordered 
evaporator for marathon unit, a sterling marathon, but you can see at the back, let me see, I'm gonna take my phone. Um, you can see that's the evaporator at the back of the unit. Um, this is two separate units. It's, it's one unit, one evaporator is used and two compartments. So that's the one compartment from, it starts from here all the way to there. That's the bottom one and that's the top uh, part. Um, I have to um, check that where the leak is. I can uh, make a longer video, but if I have a chance, I'm gonna make another uh, video. Okay, so if I have chance, I, I will make another video um, how to find the leak on this unit. Um, I know two ways that I can, uh, two or three ways to get this leak uh, uh, detected. I can find uh, the leak one way that I will use the a sniffer. I have a sniffer tool that I can uh, use it there while I'm running the compressor. It's gonna put a little bit pressure on the system and then I can uh, find it with the a sniffer and the second uh, way to find this uh, problem if I can't find it by a sniffer I'm gonna have to charge it with nitrogen maybe I'll uh, charge it 100 or 100 psi uh, with nitrogen and then with that I will be able to find it easily and if I still cannot find it by using uh, nitrogen then I'm gonna use um, soapy water uh, with a clot and then while I have nitrogen filled the unit uh, around 100 or 150 psi then I would be able to find the leak uh, with with soapy water and bubbly water or uh, with a clot that would be soapy and then after that I can repair it I'm still hoping that I don't have problem with the evaporator if the ev evaporator is leaked uh, I don't know if I'm gonna fix it or not but if there's something else wrong with it I'm gonna repair it, make a video, and then repost it. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. If you guys have any question, uh, please comment below on my channel. Thank you.